This is Norwich 9.3 CMP and this is going to be a technical video regarding the M1's Grand uh, Operation Rod or Op Rod. And we're just going to look at a couple of things. This is a video recommended uh, semi by a comment about the gas cylinder and the gauging towards the front. And the comment was, well, you only tell basically half the story. Even though the video, I try to keep them about 10 minutes, was about how to gauge the gas cylinder, clean it, etc. This is the other half of the video, and we'll discuss the uh, operating rod. So the first thing I want to point out is towards the, the business end, towards the muzzle end, is the actual uh, piston. And this piston was made, um, usually uh, the serviceable diameter that you want is 0.525 um, thousandth of an inch. And how I measure it is I use my micrometer and we're going to be measuring the outside diameter okay now because it's round we have to make sure to see how it passes through it you can also go this way and make her tight round for you and then make your reading get the center of the of the piston when you do this all right so we're a little bit so we're at over a half two six point five two six all right so that's very serviceable um, and what you're looking for is this fit into the gas cylinder there should be a little bit of play should be a little bit of movement in there and there should be a lot more towards the end because it's it's cut down here so that the op rod could be bent downward when you're disassembling when it's on the rifle one of the first things we're going to do for an inspection technical inspection is look at the head of this piston and basically what we're looking for are any chips or burrs so you should feel it make sure you don't have any burrs and then check on the face for any chips. The faces usually are dark in color, and one of my favorite tools is just the old straight razor. You can soak it in a little CLP, clean her up nice, possibly some uh, steel wool. I use 4 rot for almost anything that I do. And then I'm gonna check the shaft itself and make sure I don't have any dents. There should be a natural bend to it right about here it starts dipping downward and then straightening, uh, straightening out again over in this location this area where you see the shine rubs in the bottom of the barrel now a lot of guys say grease the hell out of your your M1 Grand to fire it I, I don't believe that's the case in this area where you're having some friction some light oil would do fine when I flip it over we call this the hooks and this is where it engages the op rod catch and holds a positive um, to the rear when you're empty. I make sure that these are cleaned out, make sure the hole is cleaned out. I never put any oil inside here. I always leave it dry. The hooks are not, they're nice and straight across here. Some of these can be chipped. I've seen where one of them is broken off, but you're looking for that nice angle. You're looking for that nice angle right there to make the catch. This happens to be a World War II Winchester. This is called a relief cut. This was a, a modification, this semicircular cut here, helped reduce some of the stress where the arm meets the main body so they wouldn't crack. Post-war production ones are actually made a lot larger and you'll see it dipping down into this area and take more metal out, okay? We go backwards. This is the cam area. Underneath here is where the bolts can to engage. And obviously where we put our knife blade of our hand on to make it operate. In here is this uh, channel. And this ramp, once it's operating going backwards, this is what rotates the bolt. I go in here and I clean everything in here. And sometimes I use a pointed tool to get into the nooks and crannies and I use a, a Q-tip. I leave this dry. 
And the last area that I really look at is what we call the box or the tab. This tab rides in the rail of the receiver. Some people measure the distance over here. Obviously the wider the better. But it's also going to come down to your individual fit on your, on your receiver. You will be able to tell with the movement looking from the top of the rifle, the play that goes this way. All right, the tighter it is, probably the better it is. And you can see our wear points where it's making contact with the rifle. Okay, I clean everything around here. This is the area where I put light lube on with CLP, all in, in here. And again, on this spot. And possibly right here. I don't lube the piston whatsoever. Okay, one of the things also I've seen is the op rod spring breaks and sometimes it will actually leave a portion inside the barrel. If you have a few of them, you lay out your, your springs, determine the length, and make sure once you in, insert them that you're coming out and it's bottoming out in the proper in this, uh, spot versus a different one. Uh, that's another thing that I have seen. Basically that's it for the op rod. This technical inspection along with gauging and cleaning your gas cylinder should give you um, very good functionality. But the very last thing I wanted to talk about in this video, because it still has to do with the operation of the rifle and M1 Grands is the barrel chamber. And what I mean by that is there were a couple different types of barrel chambers that you'll see. So on these two barrels, both are um, just post World War II. If you look really close, this one here is really has no finish on it, and this one seems to be a bit darker, even though this is a newer barrel on the back. This one's what we call in the white, and I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. This one has a dark chamber, and this one has a white chamber. The cleaner the chamber is, the better extraction you're going to have for rounds being pulled out of the barrel. The more dark and rough that chamber is, the less likely your round will be extracted properly to pick up the next round. Okay, this is what you want and should see. That's a chamber that's in the white. Okay, and that makes for positive extraction. This one is obviously dark. It's either been blued, refinished, Try to get a good focus for you here. Blued or refinished by some Bubba or Bubette, but it's not good for your functionality of your rifle. It's not going to help whatsoever, even if you do all the things with the op rod correctly and everything mics up to the proper dimensions for you, it doesn't mean that you're going to have good operation. This is probably one of the leading causes to malfunctions with your rifle. If you go through and do your technical inspections on your op rod, and your gas cylinder, your chambers or your barrels, always clean them out as best as possible and give a normal thermal, uh, thorough cleaning. And you just check, check your springs and you should be good. So this concludes the uh, quick little um, technical inspection of the M1 Grand operating rod.